Tangle friends, I'm Annie and I'd like to welcome you to my third Lunchtime Tangle series from Austria. We've had some rainy days lately that I've enjoyed because we have so little rain in Colorado. It was the perfect weather for driving through the pretty countryside to tour a nearby castle called Plunkenstein. This more than 800 year old burg was abandoned and ransacked throughout history and it stood with crumbling towers and piles of rubble for years. It passed through several owners and has since been bought by Eric Podstantny, a successful businessman in Vienna. He took ownership in 2010 and began his comprehensive renovations that continue today. Now, the rooms sport his collection of curiosities from throughout the world, and he has also had incredible enchanting contemporary ceramics incorporated into the walls, corners, and architecture of the castle. You can now book overnight stays in unique rooms with modern conveniences, enjoy meals with local cuisine, and even attend special events there. This room, once the castle chapel, is now a reception room for weddings and other special events. The magical setting offered me so much inspiration. I just couldn't get over the tangled patterns everywhere in every corner. But I have to say, nothing impressed me more than this original stone spiral staircase. This is my new tangle. I'm calling it Plunken B. And that is in honor of the castle or the Burg Plunkenstein I was inspired by to do this. And you just saw this in the introduction. It is that spiraling staircase down into the lower quarters of the castle. B standing for Burg, which is a castle, or B standing for Bloom or Blume, because to me this looks also kind of like a flower. So this is Planken B. Let's learn how to do this. This one, we're just going to do this step out together and I will show you how to shade. Here are a couple of inspirations for you. One thing that's nice to do with this tangle is to layer it up like I did here, always drawing behind. That makes for an interesting look. And then on this one, I just used the one kind of as a big focal point or pinwheel. And I just played around with another tangle in here. And of course, you could do more tangles in here. And then I just filled it chock full of other stuff in the background. I like this border because that too was often a theme in the castle. It's a very mid medieval theme, like the Knight's Bridge or the Beetlejuice. You see that a lot in the stonework and in the decorations in the castles in medieval times. So let's learn Planken B. I'm going to just use a Zentangle tile from Zentangle and a, the Zentangle pencil or a soft graphite pencil. I have my 01 micron pen in black. I have my blending stump. And you will need an eraser for this because part of my string needs to be erased because the graphite will provide guidelines for us. So this is how it goes. I do want to show you here and I'll leave it up for a second if you want to stop the um, your video at home and just copy the, the step out. I'm also going to put the step out on my Annie's Botangle Alumni Student Facebook page. But the important thing here that you might not see very well is that you must do these lines in graphite and this too and then at the end you can round the edges and at the very end you will erase all of the guidelines so i will put this up oh, i didn't put the name on there i am going to call it plankin b or Pl plankin b for burg plankenstein or plankin bloom or blossom or blume this one's not as hard today as the other one that I stepped out. This one is starting just with a circle in the center of wherever you want to draw it. And then from the bottom, this is important to note, I'm going to start from the bottom of the center and I'm going to arc up around and come back down into the corner, sort of like a well line. If you know Zentangle, you'll know what I mean. And then 
you can either start from the same place or back up to make a little bit of a, a ridge. I'm going to start again and I'm going to do that same curve maybe out a little bit more and then come back down for a nice fat stem. So this kind of almost looks like um, a tree trunk or a, a tendril that's the end of a fern, fern front. And now we got to get out our pencil because we need to make this guideline that is basically just a circle around the center here. So I'm just going to eyeball it. You just want it to be approximately in the center. And you know, if it's not in the center, that can be, in fact, you could draw it off center on purpose to make for a nice variation. I kind of did that on some of them. This one's a little bit more off centered and it does still look pretty fun. There's our guideline. And then now we're going to make our fans, yeah, petals, if you will. And I'm just gonna start here. I'm gonna go behind and make my first line. And again, this is where you can vary whatever. You can make them fatter, wider, or thinner, depending on your taste. And one thing I am doing, I'm drawing them all the way into that center line. As, as you see, there's a little space there. And the reason I'm doing that, I'm trying to tra stay pretty true to the design of the staircase. Because I could see that uh, behind the snail-like curls coming up from the rail, or the center of the, the staircase. And you can always adjust. This one's a little bit, a little bit close. You, you can be very um, metered about it, or you can just go for, go for it. I'm just gonna kind of adjust that a little bit. So now, this is our, one, our first set of guidelines, but we are gonna continue on with our pencil. What we wanna do is go about this far down, and then do a straight line up to the top. Depending on how far you go down is going to also uh, make your petal either closer or thinner, thicker or thinner, I should say. further down you go, the more space you're going to have between the rounding. So this one was one of my first ones and I did not go down very far. So if you want to go down a little bit further, you're going to get more of a pointed petal, which we're going to have on this case. So I'm glad I'm showing you both. So now I can get my pen out and I'm going to round that tip just ever so slightly and start inking in. Round it. There are quite a few pinwheel patterns out there. I'm just trying to really stay true to this staircase that I saw. It was so inspiring. And there is my tangle. That is Plunkin B. I'm going to go now and erase this guideline. Want to make sure that your pen is dry. It goes pretty fast actually. Once you start doing it, I've done now several, as you can see in here. So let's do a couple more just to show you that overlapping principle. Let's try one going the opposite direction. Let's put my circle here. And we're gonna start from this side. And we're gonna draw behind. Remember whatever line is down, you just draw behind.
And now my pencil. We're going to have some going off the page and some overlap, which, and then we're going to start here with our spokes or our petals. That one could have been a little bit wider, so I adjusted right there. And I don't need uh, to go ahead and round with a pencil. I can just start right in with my, or I mean, I don't really feel like I need to pencil in that other part. I'm just going to start down here, come up and curve. Once you do this several times, you don't need so many guidelines. I like to do sets of threes or fives, something that's uneven. So I'm going to do another one, maybe one up here, maybe a little smaller. Going this way again. So I'm going to start down here. And that would just end up being behind all of this. So we won't even need to draw the end of that stem. Just don't forget to switch out to your pencil at this point. So we're going to draw our halo. Let's make it go behind that top petal just so we have some of that overlap. Kind of like a sun, sun rays, right? This one got kind of fat. I'm going to correct and start from here. I'm going to put another one down here after I get done with this. Again, we're going to get out our eraser and erase those lines that provided our guides. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to do some line weighting, which always makes any drawing more interesting. So on this one, I'm going to do some line weight down here. You could continue it up here as well. And I'm going to find these little little corners and I'm going to weight that ever so slightly. So this is what we call lively line in botanical illustration. I'm going to also actually emphasize some of these lines to show a separation of the petals. I'm not going to choose every single one of them, but a few of them just to give this some more life. A little bit on the inside here just so we know that that's sitting on top of that. So look how much better that looks than just these without anything. If you want to at this point you can also use hatching to shade. I did that here on this one. Some uh, Hatching is a very pretty way to emphasize shading along with your shading too. One of the things I did here that I liked which I'm going to do in my other one I did just one of the tendrils, so it's not the whole tangle, it's just like that base of the tangle. So we don't need any guidelines. And I'm going to cross over with that one. I'm going to put the sphere here. Let's see, we're going to go this way. So I'm going to start, yeah, I'm going to start here. Pretend I know where it's going. 
and then again. Ooh, that one got really big, but that's kind of fun. You can add some really fun things, some tangles in there if you need to. There's four, so now I need a third, and I'm gonna do a really tiny one. I haven't done a really small one yet, so let's do a really small one here. Almost mucha-like or fescue-like. And then I think I will add the petals to that one. Now they're really starting to almost look like little sunshines. Fun. Then of course you can loosen everything up with all kinds of things like fescues. I'm gonna go back and weight these lines and clean this up, maybe add a couple fescues, and then I will show you how to shade. I'm back again. I've added some beefed up fescues because since these are such bold, floral-like, almost succulent-like succulent shapes, I think it looks good to have something that's a little bit thicker and more bold in terms of its design. And now we're gonna shade. Okay, if you look at my shading here, we always wanna emphasize that, that there's some movement in these petals if they're folding up like this, they're going to cause depth down here. So we want to make the area around the circle, the gemstone, or whatever you put in there, darker. So let's go ahead and add some graphite there. And while you're at it, every so once in a while, you can add some graphite to the petal line. that too will separate the petals out so that we really see that they're kind of laying on top of each other. And then we're going to get our tortillo and blend. So that's not enough for my taste. I'm gonna go back in and add a little more around this frond. And on the inside of it, we really wanna lift this stem up from the petals. And once in a while, you can drag some up here. Now what we have here is this big fat stem that's kind of in our face right now, right, because it has no shading on it, we want to have a little shading on one side, indicating that the light is hitting it from this direction. And you can gradate that as well. You can add a little bit more. You know, you can layer your shading just as you can layer colors. You can start with a harder pencil and continue to get softer in your layering. Play around with your graphite, it's such an amazing tool. And then for here, I'm just gonna do my typical little kind of quick comma gemstone. Like you've seen me do in so many tutorials. Leaving a bit of a white halo there for um, reflective light. I am getting out a softer pencil just because this is still not dark enough for me. This is where you always have to kind of gauge your paper that you're working on and see which pencils work best for you. As always, you want to have a lot of light lights and dark darks. And we have that really dark, dark, but I'm making it transition. We don't want to have hard lines. So there was, would be the way to shade Plunk and B. Since we have some overlap on this tile with our elements, I want to show you the shading there. We want this that is on the top, look like it's on the top, pushing this stem back. So how do we do that? We put draw, we do kind of what we call atmospheric perspective. We drop that in the background by adding shading 
all around where the two meet and that adds air it adds atmosphere between the top and the bottom elements now you can really see that this is on top and this is in the back and then here we could just play around with making this a bit more three-dimensional we're going to do the same thing here so this is on top put some shading here besides on our regular shaded areas just to separate those from each other here and here just like we do in hollow ball and here there's a little bit going here and here as well That is my new tangle, Plunk and Bee. Interesting. You can see how so varied you can make it. Here's a bit of a smaller flower bloom, and here's a larger one. Here's one with patterns inside. Can't wait to see, as always, all of your explorations with this pattern. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.